Hey everyone, this is Kevin with InventSpark, and today, with this second part of this, I'm going to show how to make a specific object that a user on Thingiverse had a question about how to make a precise model. It was kind of ironic because I was going to be doing the Measure It video, and I thought I would basically show how I went ahead and helped him create the kind of object that he needed to make, and he wanted to know my workflow through it, so... I figured that'd be a good opportunity to show how to how I did it and how you can use the measured app add-on. I keep saying app, I don't know why. <laughs> the add-on to help create the project or the item that he wanted to make. So anyway, the first part of the object that he needed was he gave everything to me in inches, and I don't really use inches, so I'm going to be converting everything from millimeters into inches and I'll do that through the thing here by just doing the math in the little thing. That's one thing that's cool about the blender is you can do math inside of the little text window here and it'll do the math for you. So you just type it in and it does the equation. And first thing we do is create a cube and go into wireframe mode and select all of one side of the vertices. Shift S and then cursor to the selected, so it basically puts the cursor in the middle of all of those different points, so the center object is there. And then I do spacebar, type in set origin. There's a shortcut key for that, but I never remember it. I never use it because to me this is a lot easier just to spacebar type set origin. Then every time you hit the spacebar it's there to use just as a short little thing. So now that the uh, origin is now at the very zero point of this cube, we can use that to our advantage and move the cursor back to the center. Then selection the cursor moves the object there. And so this object needed to be 0.23 inches by 0.23 inches. And to do that, take 0.23 times 25.4, which is 25.4 millimeters in an inch. So 0.23 times 25.4, and it needed to be 1.7 inches, so times 25.4. So we have the uh, size of the first part of the object that he needed. And he also needed to have a plus at the bottom here, which was a half inch up. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this object. And we can change this to 0.5 times 25.4, which is 12.7. So I'm just going to make this cube like that. He didn't give me the exact size of what the object or the cross here needed to be. It was basically an X at the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this object. I'm going to change the origin. Cursor to selected. Set origin to 3D cursor. So now this object is basically just my measurement cube. So if I size it up, it goes to there. So we put cursor to the center again, and then move this object to the center. So this is on zero and zero on there. We can size that up, and I'm just going to size it to kind of what I thought would be a good point. So we want this square to be the segment that we're going to be taking out exactly symmetrical across all different things. So that looks about good. So now what I'm going to do is basically just line this up as close as I can. Just zoom in, zoom in, just keep zooming in. Line it up, keep zooming in. And so get that as close as we can to the edge there. When you're zoomed in that far, it's on the micron, even nanometer scale. So basically, keep this as centered as where it's at on this object at the bottom, because it's on there. And so we're going to duplicate this, and then just make this negative. Well, don't delete it. Negative. <laughs> having difficulties today. Duplicate it and make this negative. 
and I have the four different things and just join those together. Now I have what we can do to make a boolean to make that a plus in the bottom or an X. Basically, you wanted an X. I didn't know if you wanted it on the corner so that had points or not, but this is just the way I did it. So, and I'm not even using the measure it app thing yet. So, basically, to use that, use the measure it show, and we want to do just one side of this and do that segment so that's showing in millimeters make this a little bit bigger here and saying it's really big I'm wondering if I can change the Okay, so I just changed the size units to millimeters and it's showing the correct length there. So even though I am working in millimeters, it's the measure it can show it in whatever units you're going to be using. So Blender is working in millimeters and this is working in inches. So <laughs> it's kind of, kind of confusing, but you can do it. So, and just to show how it is working so we just do a segment there so it shows it's a half inch and for this go here to here so gotta make sure you don't do it at the angle because otherwise it'll me measure the diagonal do that segment so it shows it's the 0.23 and so we got that all set up I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and just move it up here. I'll rotate it negative 90 degrees. Kind of move it up over close to where it needs to be. Not exactly, but kind of close. And so I need to find out what point this corner is. So I just want to select that. And right now it's showing the local coordinates. I need to have it be on global. So the X position of this is 2.921. So we can change that to 2.921. And it moves it over to line up exactly with that. So that is now lined up. And to match it up, I just come in here and zoom in close as I possibly can and just make it overlap ever so slightly. So that way when we do the boolean it combines them together well. And so I didn't know if he wanted it to be from here to here or from here to here be 1.7 inches but for this demonstration I'm just going to be doing it from there. Otherwise you can put this whole object down here and put it from there or make it longer but I'm basically just using that for this for an example on how to kind of do what he wanted. And same thing for this. To get this exact, you want to select that object. Find out the location of that on the Z axis is 4.90022. Okay, so it's going to be 49. Okay, for some reason Blender is converting it to centimeters. Not sure why. Just kind of line this up as best as we can. Okay, so that's lined up now. And so now what we need is a cylinder on the end here. To do that, just add the cylinder go over here. And the cylinder is huge. We don't want it to be huge. So, but anyway, this needed to be half an inch round.
So, okay, so it still is working in millimeters. It's just changing it here to be centimeters. So, <laughs> and this needed to be 2.3 inches times 0.4. So that's 5.842. And to do the same thing we did with the cube, I'm going to make the origin down here. So select that, cursor to the selected, go to edit mode, set origin to the 3D cursor. So now the rotation angle and everything is going to be at that point. You can rotate it at 90 degrees. Find out what that point is. That is on the X is 3. Point f Actually, it's 34.417. Doing like three different measurement calculations in my head now. Because it's centimeters to millimeters. It's easy, but it gets confusing. as close as we can. It doesn't really need to be the exact, but it'll be close. So now we have the measurement of that. Do a measurement of that. So it measures as 2.3 inches, so that's right. And to get the width of the cylinder, we can go from here to here. Those look like opposite sets, but I'll go ahead and go over here. So deselect those two and deselect those two. So that's a half inch round. So everything's measured and it shows exactly what everything is. Oh wait, this wasn't a half inch, this was a quarter inch round. My apologies, so 0.25 times 25.4, 0.25 times 25.4. Okay, so we just actually had to make an adjustment to the measurement, and we did that, and it's still lined up on the edge here, so we don't need to modify any of that, so it's right where we need it, we just need to move it up to where it kind of needs to be. Close as we can get there. Go to edit mode. And so what I'm going to do is select everything in here. Duplicate it. And then move everything as a copy to the second layer. So now we have two layers of the exact same thing. And <clears throat> oh, I forgot. There's one more thing I need to make. So I need to make a cube, because so you wanted to have a flange here, like a little triangle. And the easy way to do that is just kind of make a cube, select these two vertices and X, and delete the vertices. Then highlight bottom corner vertex and that other one, and then select everything and press F. And then puts faces on everything, and then you have a 90 degree triangle. And this just needed to be over here somewhere. I just want to put that kind of somewhere around here. Just so it overlaps a little bit. Because this, there's no real measurements on it that really matter. Duplicate that and move it to the second layer. So now we pretty much have the object done. We just need to attach everything together. And to do that, we need to do booleans. So 
Let's take the first object that we started with. Add a boolean, union, actually no more difference. And right click on that to find out what the name is. Kind of make that bigger. Cube 4. And so with Blender, the boolean options function doesn't quite work all the time. You announce with the new update. You can change that from bmesh to carve, and usually it'll do it like it's supposed to. It doesn't always work, but it does. <laughs> Weird stuff. It's got a personality of its own. So go ahead and hit apply. Now we can delete those cubes. We have the little cross there, how it needs to be. Next up, we can do a boolean, and that's cube 1. Boolean, union, cube 1. Apply, and we can delete that cube now. So cube 1's gone, and that whole section is now combined. And do another boolean, union, that's cube 9. And I already did this video once, but my video recorder had an update and it didn't record at all, but I had the same problem before, so. For some reason it inverts this and you have to do a difference on it. And it does it there. I think I know why it was possibly doing that. I'm going to go ahead and select this. Make sure there's no doubles. Okay, there weren't any. Then go to recalculate the normals. Try carve. Okay, B mesh works, but I don't know. So we can delete the cube. And it made everything inverted. So I don't know what's going on with this. Select everything, recalculate, and it fixes it. So that's really weird. I don't know why it did that. Select everything, make sure all the normals. So it deleted nine vertices. Honestly, I have no idea why it was doing that, but <clears throat> excuse me, but it was. So anyway, we fixed it. So let's go ahead and continue on with our booleans. Boolean union. Gotta find out this is cube three. Apply. Now we can select cube three and delete it. It's now gone. And that's like it needs to be. That's just cylinder, so we got modify boolean union cylinder. Apply. I can delete the cylinder by itself. And everything is now combined. And it deletes all the measurements as you go, kind of, but... Don't really need them once we got everything built. So, there's the object and one complete thing. Just make sure it's good and remove all doubles. So, it added doubles and we get rid of those check to make sure the the object is manifold you can deselect everything control alt shift m so something's going on here where it's not quite right not sure what it would be So it seems to be something kind of really got messed up here. I don't know what would be doing that though. You can try easily fixing this by using the 3D printing option. Get rid of isolated things. See if that had any effect. Nope. Try the distorted thing. Make manifold. That did not work properly. So for some reason, 
Especially the triangle down there got all messed up. At last, I'll go ahead and try to fix all of this. Kind of explain it I'm going along a bit. What I think happened is I had the everything too accurate and too close together. You kind of have to have things over, overlapping a little bit for it to function properly. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually delete this entire thing, get rid of it, go back to everything here. Just select everything and shift D, duplicate it, move it to the first layer and go in here and start over from scratch basically. Boolean and this is cube 3. Difference with carve that seemed to work. Delete that, and I'm going to do a root doubles, and I'm also going to recalculate that. And with this, I'm going to. This one seemed to be the one that only one that I overlapped slightly. So I'm going to. Go ahead and move it down a little bit more. This one as well. And that one as well. Just move them over so that they're overlapping more. And this one, we calculate everything. Start with this one. Union with, actually I'm going to try it with that one first. So cube zero, zero, zero. That one a lot smoother than before, so. So that worked good. So let's go with that. Union cube four. That looks good. And I'm including all of this mess up that I did because it happens and sometimes you gotta start over from not quite scratch but almost. <laughs> because it is a failure of some sort and they happen and you gotta figure out how to do it. And it was so messed up that it, I figured it would be best to start over from the booleans when I did before. So that's cube 9. So I tried to add that and it, well that's union not intersect. So that was working right. So that worked. So everything looks okay so far. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is cylinder zero zero zero. Lean union. Apply. So select everything. Move doubles. I want to have a lot more doubles. Let's see if there's anything non manifold. And it's doing the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and Go back and get a lot of here. I'm 
Well, oops. Do carve instead of B mesh and see if that makes a difference. And the measure, we're not really not using that anymore, so we can get rid of those. Okay, so the only non manifold thing now is down here. Which doesn't quite make sense. Try the 3D printing again. Nope, so something's going on with this here, so it's not quite working. And my cat's throwing a fit if you can hear her. Because I shut my door, and I don't normally shut my door, so she's locked out and upset at me. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we got a double face or something going on. So that face does not need to be there. This face does not need to be there. That face does not need to be there. That's got really messed up. I don't know what the deal is. That face does not need to be there. face does not need to be there. That face does not need to be there. Okay, so there's a lot of little things that got messed up. So for some reason there's a whole bunch of faces that were there that didn't need to be there. <coughs> and this line doesn't look like it needs to be there. Only it is in pieces. Okay, so now we can fix this. And fix this. There's another line that doesn't need to be there. Merge at last. So that's fixed there. I'll do that because there is double vertices here. Merge at center. Merge at center. Because when you select on an object, it should have the little faded lines coming out from every corner. And if it doesn't, that means that there's more than one vertices there. Like that one, that one, there's more than one. If you grab it and move it away, it shows that there's one, more than one there. So we merge that. Okay, so now we can fix this properly. So for some reason we had a really kind of messed up operation go on there. And I can't fix this one because there are multiple lines here. Only edges. And so that deleted that entire thing. So we need to make a new one there. Now I can create a new face along there. Now this one should work just fine. So let's check this one again. And it's still unmanifold. I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this and figure out what's going on with it. Because there's all kinds of stuff that shouldn't be happening. My guess is there's another line here that shouldn't be here. Somewhere. Actually, remove doubles. I 
Okay, what's not manifold about this? Merge at center. Merge at center. Oh, she really wants to get in, doesn't she? <laughs> My silly cat. Okay, so there's a problem there. Merge at center. Oh, there's multiple here. Merge those together. Okay, this one? No. This one? Yep. Okay, there is a, a multiple line here. So that's what the problem was. There was a multiple line. So let's fix this. Go ahead and check again. And here, that line actually does not need to be there. And control shift down. So the entire object is now manifold and we're done. So I just basically <laughs> made the object. It was, turned out to be a lot more complicated than it really needed to be. For some reason, the boolean of this triangle object did not go well. I don't know what the deal was with that. And something was wrong with the B mesh and or the boolean B mesh tool. The, the boolean's always been a little bit sketchy, but it's even more sketchy with the new update with the difference between the B-Mesh and Carve tool. So, But anyway, that's basically the object. And If you need to change anything, hopefully you don't. But if you do, you can. And then just make duplicates, move it to a different layer, and then work on it in that layer. But you have the original object to work with. So there's that. And... I think that's pretty much it for this, and thanks for watching.